Number five, we are given f of x as a rational expression. That means it's a fraction. We need to, we're asked to find the zeros, the domain, and then to simplify. To find the zeros, we're going to re, um, factor the numerator and factor the denominator. To factor the numerator, they, they all have a GCF. That means something goes into all of them, and that's x. We're going to factor that out. We're left with 3x squared plus x minus 2. <coughs> and we have to factor that even further. Now we're going to take 3 multiply it by negative 2, that's negative 6. Our b is 1, that's the number that's multiplied by x. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 6 and add to give us 1. So those two numbers are negative 2 and 3. So we rewrite We rewrite this, we leave the x, rewrite it as 3x squared, and instead of plus 1x, we're going to put plus 3x minus 2x. We got that from these two numbers. Minus 2. Now we're going to factor by grouping. We group these two, the first two. They both have a 3x in common. And we're left with x plus 1. The second two have a negative 2 in common. We're left with x plus 1. So that factors into 3x minus 2 times x plus 1. And we still have the x that we're going to bring down. So that's the numerator. The denominator is a difference of two squares. That's this one. That factors into 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. So in order to find the zeros, I'm actually going to answer part B first, the domain. Domain means what are all the possible x values? What can x be? In order to see what x can be, we're going to find out what x cannot be. X cannot be anything that makes the denominator 0. Well, we look at our denominator, that's these guys, and we set it equal to 0 to see for what X what X gives us makes the denominator be 0. So we get 3X equals 2. Divide both sides by 3, we get X equals 2 thirds. And for this, we get x equals negative 2 thirds. So our domain is all x except when x is negative 2 thirds and 2 thirds. These are the values that x cannot be. All real numbers except, we should probably write that down, we should write all real numbers except except x cannot equal to negative two-thirds and two-thirds. Okay, so we reduce these two, and now we can set what's left on the numerator to equal to zero. That will be the answer to part A, which is the zeros of the function. We can't let x be two-thirds or negative two-thirds, so we can't, so we can't set the 3x minus 2 equal to 0, but we can set x equal to 0. That's over. That's the first factor of our numerator. And we can set x plus 1 equal to 0. So that's x equals negative 1. So the zeros of the function are at 0 and negative 1. That means that's where it crosses the x-axis. 
Okay, and then to simplify, it said simplify. We already saw what, what happens after we reduce. We get x times x plus 1 over 3x plus 2. That's the answer to part C. Now let's move on to the next problem. Given f of x and g of x, find f times g of x. So what we do is we factor f and we factor g, we reduce and we multiply. So this is what they want us to do. That's f times no, g So we're going to factor the first one. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 2 and add to give us 3. Those two numbers are 2 and 1. So the first one gets factored into x plus 2 times x plus 1. Then we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 2 and add I'm sorry, I copied this problem wrong, plus 2. So two numbers that multiply to give us 2, positive 2, and add to give us negative 3. So the two numbers are negative 2 and negative 1. So that factors into x minus 2 and x minus 1. The second part, the numerator is difference of two squares. That factors into x plus 2 and x minus 2. And the denominator is also a difference of squares that factors into x minus 1 and x plus 1. Now we can reduce. So there is an x plus 1 and an x plus 1 that reduces. And actually, that's all that we can reduce. So the answer is x plus 2 squared. That's x plus 2 times x plus 2. Time. Oh, I didn't notice this. The x minus 2 is reduced. There's an x minus 2 and there's an x minus 2. Okay, that's better. And then in the denominator, we have x minus 1 times x minus 1, which is x minus 1 squared. So that's our answer. We could, we could also put the answer in this form, x plus 2 over x minus 1 quantity squared. Either, either one are acceptable.